Here is Synthax, a time traveler from the year 2500. A man, or rather, an entity, bound not by the constraining progression of seconds, minutes, and hours, but by the limitless expanse of centuries, eons, and epochs. I have traversed the volatile cosmic tides, surfed the swirling eddies of the time-space continuum, and pierced the shroud of historical obscurity to find myself, once again, amidst the swirling dust and ancient relics of the bygone era. My mission, to uncover the mysteries enshrined within the lost book of Enki, a treasure of knowledge hailing from the enigmatic Sumerian civilization. I am not of this era. The concrete jungles and steel giants of the 21st century are as foreign to me as the obsidian obelisks and golden tombs of ancient Egypt. I am a time voyager, unbound by temporal shackles, forever observing, ever exploring. The lost book of Enki, long rumored to hold the secrets of the cosmos, is my quarry. A chronicle of ancient knowledge, penned by Enki, the Sumerian god of wisdom and water, it is believed to unlock truths about our world and the universe beyond. My journey to recover the lost book began when I found an obscure reference to it in a cryptic codex from my own era. It was a map of sorts, filled with symbols and notations that only the most seasoned of time travelers could interpret. The codex had hinted towards a paradoxical relationship between the book and time itself, suggesting the book's timeless knowledge could echo through history, subtly influencing the course of humanity. The trail first led me to ancient Samaria, nestled in the cradle of civilization. I observed this nascent society from a distance, intrigued by their practices and customs. Their cuneiform script, an art form in its own right, told me of their relationship with the cosmos, their gods, and their perception of time. Enki, the god of wisdom and water, held an omnipotent position in their pantheon, and the reverence for him was vividly tangible. I mingled amongst the Sumerians, my adaptive bio-cloak masking my outlandish appearance. I needed to understand their language, their stories, their very psyche if I were to discover the lost book of Enki. The locals were receptive to my queries, mistaking me for a curious traveler from distant lands. In this way, I began to gather the pieces of an ancient puzzle. The Sumerians spoke of a great library, the Eridu Genesis, which housed innumerable scrolls and tablets, including the most revered, the Book of Enki. I knew then that this was my destination. Unfortunately, the library was heavily guarded, accessible only to the highest-ranking priests and the nobility. I had to devise a plan. With my advanced tech, I was able to simulate the appearance of a Sumerian noble. Then, I began a game of deception, spreading rumors of an impending disaster foretold in the stars. My newly gained stature allowed me to convince the priests that the Book of Enki might hold the key to averting the calamity. My plan worked flawlessly. As the worried priests debated amongst themselves, they agreed to let me access the Eridu Genesis. Walking amongst the tall, ancient shelves brimming with clay tablets was an experience in itself. The air was heavy with knowledge, carrying echoes of wisdom passed down through ages. Eventually, I found it. A magnificent tablet, inscribed with intricate cuneiform, radiating an almost palpable energy. The Lost Book of Enki. I could hardly believe my eyes. This artifact, lost to time, stood before me, holding secrets of a civilization that had perished millennia ago. Its aura was captivating, drawing me in, begging to be read. As I began to read, the words morphed before my eyes, shifting from cuneiform to my native language, the language of the future. I realized the book was not merely a piece of ancient literature, but a conscious entity, an interface between man and the cosmos. The lost book of Enki unveiled stories about our universe's creation, the birth of the gods, and their interactions with humanity. Enki, who was depicted as a complex figure, both wise and mischievous, was integral to these cosmic narratives. Enki's relationship with humans was particularly interesting. He was portrayed as a benefactor, teaching Sumerians advanced arts and sciences. The book suggested Enki might have had a hand in shaping human civilization, possibly hinting at an extraterrestrial influence on our species' evolution. The book also contained prophecies. Cryptic verses described a future where humankind grapples with its own identity, staring into the abyss of existential uncertainty. These verses reverberated in my mind, reminding me of the dilemmas we face in my own time. The narrative then veered into uncharted territory. The book contained detailed descriptions of cosmological events, like the birth of stars and galaxies, phenomena that the Sumerians shouldn't have known about. It was mind-boggling.
This was more than just mythology, it was science. The Book of Enki then described a cataclysmic event, an event that led to the fall of the Sumerian civilization. The verses spoke of a massive flood, sent by the gods as a form of divine retribution. Enki, however, had helped humanity survive by warning a select few, showing his compassion. The narrative took a dramatic turn. It spoke of a hidden knowledge, a language of the gods, encoded in the fabric of reality. This code, it said, could unlock the ultimate secrets of the universe. This was the book's most enigmatic revelation yet. As I delved deeper, the text began to fade, as if reacting to my touch. The clay was not meant to withstand the ravages of time, and my interference was causing it to crumble. I had to record the knowledge fast, lest it be lost forever. I activated my neural recorder, a device that could store vast amounts of information directly into my memory. As I rushed through the remaining text, I felt the knowledge seep into me, becoming part of my essence. It was a dizzying, intoxicating experience. As the last of the text disintegrated, I felt an intense wave of sadness. The book, the artifact of an ancient civilization, a piece of history, was now gone. But its knowledge was not lost. It lived within me, a testament to the brilliance of the Sumerians and their god, Enki. Emerging from the library, I blended back into the crowd, hiding my sorrow behind a mask of composure. I had accomplished my mission, but the cost of knowledge was more than I'd expected. The book had disappeared, but its wisdom would continue to resonate through the ages. With the knowledge now within me, I slipped back into the rhythm of Sumerian life, observing the people and their ways with newfound appreciation. I was no longer a mere spectator, but a participant in their grand cosmic narrative. As I interacted with the locals, I found their tales interwoven with the wisdom from the book, offering a tangible understanding of the civilization's underlying ethos. Days turned into weeks as I remained within the Sumerian realm. The wisdom from the Book of Enki began to alter my perspective, allowing me to see the culture's nuances previously hidden from my understanding. Each ritual, every word of their language, and the design of their cities started to form an intricate tapestry of wisdom that I had been seeking. The people of this era viewed the cosmos differently, with a reverence and curiosity that was somehow pure, unspoiled by modern cynicism. In their eyes, the universe was not a vast, indifferent void, but a realm filled with divine entities that guided their existence. I began to realize the critical role Enki played in their society. He was not just a deity to them. He was a teacher, a guide, and a protector. The knowledge he passed on to them through the book wasn't just a collection of facts. It was a way of life, a philosophy that shaped their civilization. As time progressed, I noticed something peculiar. The Sumerians were changing. It was subtle at first, but the more I observed, the clearer it became. Their rituals grew more intricate, their architecture more grand, their understanding of the cosmos more profound. Was this the influence of the book's knowledge, or was it a natural progression? Fascinated, I delved deeper into their society, observing these changes at close quarters. I saw artisans working on sculptures of deities with an uncanny resemblance to the descriptions in the book. I noticed scholars debating astronomical phenomena that echoed the cosmic events outlined in the book. It was as if the book was quietly reshaping the civilization. Months turned into years, and the lost book of Enki's wisdom had become part of my very being. I was no longer just Synthax, the time traveler. I was now Synthax, the bearer of Enki's wisdom. Yet, I also knew that I could not stay here forever. The tides of time were calling me back, pulling me towards my own era. But before I could leave, I had to ensure that the knowledge of the lost book of Enki would not disappear with me. I needed to plant the seeds of this wisdom, allowing it to bloom in the minds of the Sumerians and influence their future generations. So, I began subtly sharing the book's wisdom with the Sumerians, weaving its teachings into their stories and traditions. I saw them marvel at the knowledge, the joy in their eyes reflecting the spark of understanding. I knew then that the Book of Enki's wisdom would live on, shaping the trajectory of this ancient civilization. Years passed in the blink of an eye, and it was finally time for me to depart. I bade my farewell to the Sumerians, my heart heavy with the sorrow of parting. I had spent a significant portion of my existence amongst them, and they had become more than just subjects of my observation. They were my friends, my teachers, and my family. As I prepared to step into the temporal vortex that would take me forward in time, I took one last look at the Sumerian city. 
The towering ziggurats reached towards the heavens, and the Euphrates River flowed serenely, mirroring the resilience of a civilization that had weathered the winds of time. The people were going about their lives, oblivious to my imminent departure. I would carry them and their wisdom with me, etched in the annals of my memory. Finally, I activated my time device, and the familiar hum of the temporal vortex filled the air. As I stepped into the whirling energies, I cast a final glance at the land that had been my home for what seemed like an eternity. The vortex closed behind me, leaving the Sumerian city untouched by my presence, yet irrevocably altered by the wisdom of the lost book of Enki that I had shared. The journey had been a paradox, like time itself. I was both the observer and the participant, the teacher and the student. The Sumerians, the Book of Enki, and the wisdom it contained were now part of me, echoing in the vast corridors of time. Until we meet again, farewell.